After experimenting with it last season, Bryce Harper will officially be transitioning the first base full time for 2024. And although he did say never say never when it came to him potentially playing the outfield again, he prefaced that by stating that he doesn't see himself back in right, so he could be finishing his career as a first baseman. And while this may not seem like a big deal, it could have some ripple effects throughout baseball because star players like this don't usually change positions during their career, even though some should have. So if a player of Harper's status could do this, what is stopping the Angels from doing something similar with a guy like Mike Trout to try and preserve his time in the field longer? Or perhaps the Yankees with a player like Aaron Judge? It doesn't necessarily have to be at first base, but is having these guys out in the field in a prominent position worth it? You see, while we could complain about the game being soft now or something, the reality is that some of the best players on earth have had major injury concerns recently. Whether it's Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, Aaron Judge, Ronald Acuna Jr., Corey Seager, or even Bryce Harper, they've all missed time with some bumps and bruises, and some of those are directly related to fielding. And considering baseball's past is filled with guys whose primes could have been potentially extended if they didn't get run down, it offers an interesting question of how much defensive value are we willing to punt for a bit more longevity of top tier work with the bat? Especially since teams today have the universal DH rule, the fates of injury riddled players of the past could have been handled at the very least better now. But before we get into that, if you're unfamiliar with me, my name is Peyton, and I run big league analysis on TikTok and highlighting baseball on Snapchat, while also working here at Made the Cut. I'm filling in for Jake this week as he's working on some special stuff, and hopefully I'm able to do a good job in relief. If you enjoy my work here, and I really hope you do, my links will be in the description. But let's get into it. As you already know, Bryce Harper is a superstar. Despite all the expectations in the world, he was able to somehow live up to all of them and surpass others. Winning two MVP awards while having an OPS over 900 and 306 homers at the age of 31. Funny enough, he's already changed positions in his career, going from a catcher as an amateur to the outfield as a pro. Something that's definitely helped him become more of the offensive juggernaut you know today. But while the bat has always pretty much been good, his work in the outfield is a lot more hit or miss. In Harper's first few years in the league, he was borderline elite in the field. As a rookie, he posted a 14 defensive runs saved, including 13 of those being in center. After that though, through 2017, he was fine defensively, but nothing too crazy, pretty much trading above and below average years with the glove. But this brings us to his famous 2018 season, where Harper almost erased all of that great work with the glove in a single year. For extra context, Bryce Harper was about to hit the open market in the offseason. So probably in an attempt to save his body to maximize his potential value, he clearly wasn't putting in the same effort in right field. And honestly, I don't really blame him, considering this is something that happened to him out in right at one point. In the end, his cautiousness led to him having a negative 21 defensive runs saved, absolutely draining his war total. However, that preservation of his body helped him land a $300 million deal in Philly, where he went back to being an end defender overall. But this brings us to 2022, where in April, Harper would tear his UCL on a throw, which later led to him getting Tommy John surgery following the season. But since he's Bryce Harper, he would have a superhuman recovery and not only be back in the batter's box in record-breaking time, but be back in the field by the summer, albeit at first base. And although he is healthy now and for sure a better outfielder than teammates Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos, the Phillies and Harper have still decided to go with him at first going forward instead of right. But is this the correct move? And further, what could this mean for baseball going forward? Before we get into this though, let's go over the history of something we here at MTC call superstar positional inertia. Superstar positional inertia is the weird trend that superstar level players will only really be considered for a quote unquote lesser position if that superstar status falls off. I mean, we could look at a guy like Babe Ruth who from most accounts was a very solid outfielder in his younger days with a rocket foreign arm, but that definitely was wasn't the case as he aged, which was probably helped along by how goddamn big he was. However, this probably isn't the best example considering who was blocking him at first. But in his age 40 season for the Braves, they threw him out in the outfield for allegedly disastrous results. Mickey Mantle, who had a multitude of health issues, was still being thrown out in center regularly until he was over 30 years old, resulting in a near negative 2 D war season in 1962 and an actual negative 2 D war season in 1964. A more regular move to a corner spot should have probably came sooner, but he'd moved to first base to finish his career. 
Ted Williams was never a good defender, so 18 years and two wars deep into his career, you can imagine that that didn't get better. In fact, it somehow got worse, having a negative 6.2 D war in his final three seasons and left. And no disrespect to Dick Garnett, but he definitely wasn't Gehrig out there. But to be fair, baseball philosophy was just way different back then. So for some more recent examples, a guy like Vladdy Sr. was left in the field way too long, even though he was in the AL for almost a decade. Barry Bonds, for his fielding prowess earlier in his career, had a double knee surgery in 2005 after a few below average seasons with the glove. And for probably the most relevant one, the injury riddled back half of Ken Griffey Jr.'s career was not pretty in center field. The 10 time gold glover sadly had a lot of tread on the tires, and that got expressed in the numbers as a negative 41 defensive runs saved in Cincinnati as a center fielder. They wouldn't regularly move him to a corner spot until he was 37 years old, a few years too late. But what about Harper? You see, while Bryce Harper isn't some wizard with the glove as we've gone over, he is for sure a better option than 2023 Phillies corner outfielders Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. Schwarber is basically a traffic cone in the field. He's bounced around from a few positions in his career simply because the bat has just been way too good to leave out the lineup. But the game instituting a universal DH rule seemed like a match made in heaven for his skill set. But then, Bryce Harper needed Tommy John's surgery, which ruined everything, and forced him to play the field regularly. Because of this, in 2022, you saw him post a negative 19 fielding run value according to StatCast, and then a negative 20 in 2023. These are the 5th and 6th worst marks of the StatCast era in that metric. And if he was given more innings, he probably could have rivaled the worst mark, which was negative 28 by 2016 Matt Kemp. But to flip over to the guy that's playing Harper's natural position, Nick Castellanos is historically a bad fielder. I don't care what fielding percentage says. He simply doesn't have the range to put himself in positions to make errors. StatCast has him graded at a negative 67 run value in his career on his range. And since joining the Phillies, his defensive woes haven't really improved, posting a negative 10. He also probably would have been in the DH spot at times if it wasn't for Harper being hurt. However, when Bryce did return to the field, this opened up Schwarbs to returning to the DH spot, and helped the Phillies throw two very good fielders in Johan Rojas and Brandon Marsh in center and left respectively. Marsh was acquired in 2022 after Harper went down, and his defensive prowess while being platooned with Matt Vierling was crucial in the Phillies postseason run. A year later, with Harper returning to the field, they call up a defensive specialist this time in Johan Rojas, and slide Marsh to left. This worked wonders, as Rojas was spectacular in the field, being tied for the second highest fielding run value on the team despite playing less than 400 innings. With his best play coming in Game 4 of the NLDS, where he saved the game for Philly when he ran down this Ronald Acuna batted ball with the bases loaded in two outs. Although they fell short in the NLCS, the Phillies smartly worked their way out of a roster jam, putting Schwarber back into the DH spot that he was only really out of due to necessity, and at the same time, getting him out of the field allowed them to slide Marsh to left and bring in a defensive specialist to Rover center field, only giving them one real defensive liability in Nick Castellanos. But you may be wondering, why not have Castellanos, who's historically a bad fielder, switch to the easier position in first base, and put the healthy Harper back in right field where he is at least competent. Well, simply put, boosting the odds that you'll get a full season of Bryce Harper's offense is probably worth having a worse fielder taking reps out and right. Harper's already missed at least 20 games in six different seasons, from a multitude of injuries to his back, arm, thumb, neck, knee, and hip. And while some of these aren't directly related to the outfield, is that best slightly above average defense from Harper really worth it when he already has an injury history and is your best offensive player? For a comparison, 2023 was Ronald Acuna Jr.'s first healthy season since tearing his ACL in 2021. And even though he was one of the biggest threats in the game when it came to stealing bases, that was one of the only times his agility came through in his playstyle. Ronald was a pretty poor defender with the glove out and right, and while yes, his cannon for an arm helped make up some of the damage his range had, it was kind of clear he was pulling back a bit, whether it was intentional or because of some fear relating back to the fact he got hurt on a play in right field. 
And funny enough, it was kind of a similar thing on the bases. Because even though he did steal 73 bags, when it came to base running on live balls, he was more conservative than you'd think. Only attempting to advance an extra base just 3% more than a generic runner in the same situation. Not even top 100 in baseball. Also, while Acuna did start the season hustling out a ton of infield singles, his infield hit percentage got cut in half after the All-Star break with his mark of 5.7% being worse than Jake Berger, a guy who actually had the same sprint speed as Acuna this year. Now, that doesn't mean they're the same speed. I mean, not at all, actually. Acuna had 18 bolts, which means runs over 30 feet per second, and Berger had zero. Instead, sprint speed is more of an average of two-thirds of their best runs. But all of this strategic pulling back allowed Acuna to post one of the most ridiculous seasons ever. Now, I'm not advocating for players to stop trying or anything. Instead, what I am saying is that the Braves do not need Acuna to be a gold glove right fielder. They don't necessarily need him to always take the extra base either. Instead, they need him to be in the lineup. They need him to be on the bases because this Atlanta team is better with him on the field. So even though some may look at a player not putting in 100% on each play as a selfish move, in reality, these guys are sacrificing having the best individual numbers possible for staying on the field long term, which is a similar thing for a guy like Harper. Because moving to first base will probably lower his overall value in war total, but it boosts Kyle Schwarber's, it makes his outfield better, and it increases his chances at playing 150 games. To go back to the historical players we talked about though, Mickey Mantle and Babe Ruth had the outfield so tied to their identity that I understand why they weren't in a rush to change. And Teddy Ball game was always kind of known as a poor defender. But besides, baseball philosophy was way different back then, and it's pretty hard to judge teams in retrospect with analytics we have today. However, Ken Griffey Jr. is the most curious case of them all, because he was kept in center for way too long. As I mentioned, he had a negative 41 defensive run saved as a red in center field. Something that played a factor in him only playing 50 games in 01, 92 in 02, 109 in 03, and 80 in 2004. A stretch that probably costed him a chance at 700 homers, because when he was on the field, he raked. Slapping 63 bombs in 317 games in that stretch, which was good for 32 per 162 games. I mean, hey, in 2005, at age 35, he slapped 35 tanks in 128 games. Then in 2006, he had 26 in 109. 2007 is when he finally moved to left, and for the first time since 2000, he played in over 140 games. Although that may be coincidental, and I'm not saying it would have been the ultimate antidote, you could imagine that the kid's game would have aged better, or at the very least, would have had him on the field more in his early 30s if he switched to a less demanding defensive spot. But with the Phillies setting this precedent with Harper, perhaps the back half of an active future Hall of Fame center fielder's career could be saved, and potentially the longevity of a modern day Marvel could be extended. If you recall, I mentioned the stat that said that Bryce Harper has missed at least 20 games in six different seasons, and tied with him at that mark is Mike Trout. However, those have come in six consecutive seasons, discounting 2020. Trout has been kind of blocked at the DH spot by Otani, but he has not played a game at a corner outfield position since 2013. To his credit though, Trout has pretty much always been a net positive defender at a premium position. And on the bases in 2023, he posted his highest sprint speed since he was 23 years old at 29.5 feet. Mike Trout plays the game hard, which is beautiful, but it's almost to a fault. He can't handle it the same way anymore, especially after a litany of injuries and a degenerative back issue. So with that in mind, the Angels need to shift their focus to preserving their star. At the very least, we have to get him out of center as soon as possible, and potentially DH him often. Or maybe even first base, but that's probably too harsh of an adjustment. Like what the Phillies did with Marsh and Rojas, if the Angels want good defense in center, they can find that through other means. Losing Trout's production in center field with the glove won't sink the Angels, but losing his bat will. And I know that his most recent injury was in the batter's box and previous wrist and back issues would have probably still happened at a different position, but there is no way it wouldn't have helped. Otani leaving alone will probably help as the DH spot will be open, so hopefully in 2024 he will easily beat his previous career high at 15 games at DH, because we need it. Now at 31, he is the same age as Ken Griffey Jr. when his decline started, and hopefully with some extra caution, history won't repeat itself. 
Aaron Judge of the Yankees is in a more unique situation. Judge is currently the same age as Trout and Harper, but he's only going into the second year of his big contract. While he stayed healthy in 2021 and 2022, 2023 ended this trend when he literally ran through a wall at Dodger Stadium. The loss of their captain basically ended the Yankees season, and despite bolstering their outfield death this offseason, Judge will be moving to center for 2024. At a press conference recently, he joked that he kept getting hurt in right field, and that's why they moved him to center and that he doesn't think there'll be any cement bottoms or walls in center field. But more crucially, he said that he needs to be smarter out there, especially now since his toe issue, which stems from that play in LA last season, seems to be something that will always need maintenance. But with the DH spot blocked by Stanton and the first base spot blocked by Rizzo, it would be interesting to see how the Yankees use Judge in the field as he ages. Last year during his injury rehab, he was taking reps at first base. Could that be the future for the 6'8 giant once he hits its mid to late 30s? As he ages especially and similar to Trout, getting as many games as possible out of Judge has to be the priority. Because 140 games of first base slash DH Aaron Judge a few years from now will totally be more worthwhile than 100 games of outfield Judge. Overall, while Bryce Harper permanently moving to first base may not seem like a big deal, it could open the door for players of a similar stature to overcome the trend of superstar positional inertia and potentially prolong their careers by moving to a lesser defensive position. I mean, out in LA last year, the Dodgers basically used Mookie Betts as a utility guy. And although that was more at a necessity rather than preservation, even though preserving some players is a necessity, it makes me wonder whether we're a bit too close-minded in where we play guys defensively. Just because a player is of high status doesn't mean we have to lock him into one position until the wheels fall off. But regardless of your perspective on this, I hope this was an interesting thing to think about. But for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like as it helps a lot. And if you want more video essay content like this, consider subscribing. Have a great day.